So now we're going to move on to uh, four six. Uh, this is uh, dealing with what roles do species play in an ecosystem, and, and the role a species plays in an ecosystem is its niche. Okay, and, and in an ecosystem, you can talk about two different types of uh, species. You have your generalist species and then you have your specialist species. The generalists um, have broad niches, okay, which means that they can live in a bunch of different places, they can eat a variety of foods, they can often tolerate um, lots of different environmental conditions. Um, some examples here are flies, cockroaches, mice, rats, deer, uh, raccoons, which we see here in, in the diagram. Um, specialist species Basically, uh, they, they, have a, they have narrow niches, okay? They can only live maybe in one type of habitat, or maybe they can only uh, eat one type of food, or maybe they can only tolerate a really narrow um, range of, of different environmental conditions and climates. Um, in this case, in this diagram, we see that the panda is one. And because of these narrow niches, the specialists are more prone to extinction when environmental conditions change. Um, the panda, for example, is highly endangered because of a combination of uh, its habitat loss, its low birth rate, and then its absolutely specialized diet of bamboo. So you've got this region of niche overlap down here. So if there are too many of these generalist species competing for just this uh, section of resource use, then the specialists are really going to wind up being in trouble. And here are just a couple, this is a diagram on top of page 96. Uh, it shows the specialized feeding niches of various bird species in a coastal wetland. Um, basically, the, the bunch of different specialization uh, scenarios for each one of these, um, it actually winds up reducing competition for resources because every single one of these species and these organisms is so specialized with the food that it needs to eat and the conditions in which it survives that the competition for resources is actually very low. So this coastal wetland actually winds up being a pretty successful ecosystem. All right, let's talk about uh, the roles of species in ecosystems. Um, we're talking about a couple of different types of species. Uh, native species. Uh, native species are species that normally live and thrive in a particular ecosystem. Okay, they're the ones that are normally there. They're the ones that have, have well-established niches in that, in that ecosystem. Um, a non-native species is also referred to as an invasive species, an alien species, or an exotic species. It's one that basically, um, you know, may not belong. Uh, some people think that non-native species or invasive species can be threatening, and they certainly can. Um, they absolutely can. The, uh, the picture of this wild African honeybee, uh, which is also known as the quote-unquote killer bee, uh, these were imported into Brazil, and these invasive species actually caused problems, that include, which included the displacement of native honeybees um, and wound up uh, causing human deaths and the deaths of domestic animals. So um, even if they're not brought in, um, and they're not imported, um, you know, they can actually get there in, because of non-human influence. Um, but these uh, invasive species, they can certainly spread very rapidly um, if they find a new location that is, that's favorable for them. And then in their new niches, they basically wind up taking over and they pretty much outcompete everyone or everyone, every other species in that ecosystem for resources. Um, these indicator species, uh, indicator species, and I'm going to go to the next slide here and then I'll come back. Um, basically, these are types of species that provide what are known as early warnings of damage to a community or an ecosystem. Um, so basically, you know, there it, I'll even show you here. Um, we've got these amphibians uh, that are found worldwide, okay, but um, Amphibians are actually really, really good indic indicator species because the population change of amphibians due to any of these uh, indicators or these, these uh, environmental changes that are listed up top um, show that, hey, these amphibian species are going down, something's going on. Um, and then there's a section in your book where it talks about why, why should we care about that? Okay, well, uh, amphibians being indicator species, I mean, they are, they're sensitive biological indicators of changes in environmental conditions. So if we see the amphibian declines, then we know that there's something going on. Um, the adult amphibians, they play important roles in the ecological and biological communities that they live in. Um, you know, they, they, they wind up eating more insects than birds. 
Um, in some habitats, the extinction of certain amphibian species could wind up leading to extinction of other species, like reptiles or birds or other insects, fish, mammals, um, and other amphibians uh, that feed on them or, uh, or their larvae. And then finally, there, there's so much research potential with uh, amphibian skin, um, secretions from the skin. These things have been isolated and they've actually been tested in the pharmaceutical market to see if they can be um, cures for burns uh, or treatments for burns and treatments for heart disease. So um, amphibians being an indicator species is actually, uh, is actually a really, 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 really important thing. So let's go back here and we'll go back to this, uh, this thing about a keystone species. Um, a keystone species is a species whose roles have a large effect on the types and abundance of other species in an ecosystem. They usually exist in really small numbers in their ecosystems, but the effects that they have there are usually a lot larger uh, than their small numbers would suggest. Um, because of their smaller numbers, keystone species are in fact more vulnerable to extinction than other species are. Um, they can play lots of different roles. Um, and in fact, we're gonna talk about one of these keystone species, the American alligator. It's uh, basically what it does. It's uh, <clears throat> the American alligator uh, has kind of gone up and down. Um, it was threatened for a while. It was on the brink of extinction. Um, and basically it is a keystone species because of its important ecological role in helping to maintain the sustainability of the Florida wetlands and the southeastern wetlands. Um, it was placed on the endangered species list in 1967. Um, it's been protected from hunters since 1975 and since then it's made a strong comeback. Um, in fact, it's actually, its numbers have actually gone up, um, kind of moving it away from the keystone species because we wind up finding alligators in backyards in the southeast and swimming pools. Um, my mom and my stepdad live down in North Carolina, down on the, the southern facing coast of North Carolina, and there's a golf course in their community. And when I was playing golf, there, there were a couple of alligators on the course, and they hang out in the ponds there. Um, so right now, they're no longer endangered. Um, they have made a comeback, and now they're threatened. Um, but they're now over, well over a million alligators in Florida, and it now allows, Florida now does allow property owners to kill them if they come onto their, uh, onto their land. Um, but they are an important species because they do play a, a, a vital role in the top of the food web. And then finally, we're going to talk about foundation species. Foundation species are species that play a major role in shaping the communities um, because they create and enhance their habitats in ways that benefit other species. Um, example, elephants will push over or break or uproot trees, uh, creating openings in grasslands and woodlands of Africa. Um, basically what this will do is it will help to promote growth of grasses and other plants. They wind up helping to benefit smaller grazing uh, animals and species. Um, the pictures that you see here from your book uh, talking about beavers, uh, beavers are basically ecological engineers. They build dams and streams to create ponds and wetlands um, that they wind up using and other species use. Um, their teeth help them to cut down uh, like medium-sized trees that they use to build dams. Um, so they work at night and sleep during the day, which helps them to avoid predators. Um, but basically what they do, I mean, they, they, they create ponds and wetlands so that not only can they build their own shelters, um, but it can also protect them from predators. So them doing this not only enhances their survival, but it also helps the survival of others. So taking a look at the three big ideas for this chapter. Um, the first part, uh, populations do evolve when genes mutate, and that's the big thing, okay? It's populations evolve. We're not talking about individuals, we're talking about populations evolving. We've got mutations in genes, and those uh, some individuals have those genetic traits that wind up enhancing their abilities to survive, and then they can pass those traits down to future offspring. Secondly, human activities are decreasing the Earth's biodiversity by causing the extinction of species, uh, disrupting habitats. And finally, every species in an ecosystem does play a specific ecological role or its niche in the ecosystem. I hope you found this okay, and I will see you soon.